Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. We are holding on this meeting as we wait to achieve quorum. Many of us have reached out to other members to see if they could join in, but welcome to our attendees. Jonathan, I'm gonna go ahead and give Kathy a phone call. Okay, thank you. Oh, Sean. Hey. Yeah, so if, if we do get quorum, I'm going to hop off and then hopefully come back. Well, at the moment, it's just <laughs> you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Who do, uh, we're in for Rupert. Um, Can't remember if Ben's on this one or not. Mike will not be here, right? right. So um, so we need Rupert and... Kathy? Is Kathy the fourth? I think Ben's on the other one, right? I think so. Hello, Donna. Hello, everyone. We're, we're waiting for a quorum. Tim, um, we're clearly not in the same space, <laughs> so pardon me. Um, when when you send out those invites going forward, make sure you do it from the calendar. And I can show you how if you need to know how. Uh, Margaret said she couldn't. I'll talk to you after. I just have been on 20 calls this morning. Yeah. I haven't I, I, even gotten up. <laughs> yeah, this is my or fourth. Or had lunch, Sean. Or had lunch, Sean. <laughs> so these are our uh, healthy snack delivery that we get through Blue Cross Blue Shield. Some uh, pumpkin seeds, roasted, oh. unsalted pumpkin seeds. I have an extra bag if you want one. <laughs> yeah, sure. Come and get it, right? <laughs> Which actually we, we do need to um, show up soon. I don't know if anyone, everyone knows this is Philip with our That's office. Cool. You're going to see more, more people joining us from our team. Angela, were you able to reach uh, Kathy? There's Kathy. And um, if Rupert joins, you'll have quorum without me, right, Jonathan? One, two. Three. Do you remember who, who the full yeah. committee was, Kathy? Kathy just joined the committee, subcommittee. She will assign herself to it. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've been the ex officio member <laughs> until now. Kathy, we're Hello. already recording and I've made you host. So okay. thanks everyone for the teamwork. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think at three, we have a technical uh, uh, quorum and I would like to, to be able to have us be able to do some work. Um, hopefully Rupert will join so that Sean can go to his other meeting. Um, but uh, I don't know, uh, but I think we should probably get started. Um, Kathy, I don't mind uh, chairing this one again for today, but as I had said at the, the, the last one, I, I, want, I would like to chair just one subcommittee. Sure. Um, and so I will uh, chair today, do my best to take some notes, um, which I need to do up for my last meeting as well. Um, but hopefully, you know, we may have to add another uh, person to the committee. Um, I'll, I'll add my yeah. Jonathan. I'll, I'll, I'll officially add myself, and I'm willing to chair. You know, I can block out the time okay. easily. Um, and well, if, if you want to chair today, I'll take notes. Okay, and I think Margaret or Kesnia is. So um, I sure. 
I will chair. Okay. I'm calling um, the meeting. Thank you, um, Madam Madam Chair. C could you let Benny M in? Yes. Thank you. Uh, promote to panelist. That should bring him in. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to call the meeting to order and, um, you know, just as we look to the future of these subcommittees, I will try to send out, you know, we'll, we can do double check to people that we haven't set up a time where they can't make it um, since um, I don't see Rupert here and uh, neither Tammy or Allison. So I'm calling the meeting to order and I will first call on people to make sure they can hear and be heard, although we've all been talking to each other. So I, oh, here's Rupert, great. Um, so Jonathan? Here. Uh, Kathy is here, Sean? Here. And Rupert? Yes, I'm here, I think. Hey, that's Kathy, great. Kathy, um, so if I believe you have quorum, with, I have to hop off for another meeting now that Rupert's joined. Um, do you have quorum without me? Um, let's just say we do. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm going to try to get back at this other meeting, shouldn't um, Yeah, no, I, I think it's, you know, I think it's important to, to lay the issues on the table and start a discussion, Sean, and we're not making decisions now, so that's okay. fine. All right, I will try to be back. Thank you. So, Tim, I'm turning this over. Tim, Donna, Rick, I'm turning this over to you at this point. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. Just to see where we are. The originally uh, published agenda for this meeting was lobbies, entries, and canopies. Um, and, and, and there's a whole lot to talk about there in terms of the mechanics of how you enter the building, what needs to be accommodated in the lobby, uh, everything from space for people to wait to display to uh, the lost and found area um and and we haven't had discussions with the administration staff yet so we uh we're in the process of scheduling all those meetings as you know um so that part we can't really talk about today uh but there is um some work that we've been doing um as it relates to the changes in the site plan so i'm um, uh, Start to bring up my screen and walk us through it. Um, Kathy, if you would allow me to share my screen, please. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. I think I just did. Tell me if it didn't work. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we go. So a lot of our focus is going to be on the south entrance today uh, from the bus drop off loop. Uh, as you recall, we adjusted both of the loops to sort of shift the center of gravity to the front of the building for pedestrians and walkers. Uh, but this is still um, a major entry for the building, it, uh, depending on how um, operationally the staff wants to use the building. It could be either morning drop off or just afternoon pickup or, or we have to have that discussion, but it, it remains an important part of the building. And then there's an important function in the service area. And we carried uh, what we needed to carry at schematic design, but we want to develop to make sure that this entrance is welcoming and functions the way it has to. Uh, so just to review, this is what we carried for the service area, south entrance and canopy at the south of the building. Um, it uh, provided shade for one of the kindergarten rooms. It has a column because it was pretty sizable, uh, which is a, requires a foundation. And then there was a canopy at the entrance itself in the same language uh, to provide shelter from weather. Uh, then we did have a small fence that was not shown here but the uh, service area is right here. So the, the dumpsters and the transformer will be here. Um, and part of uh, the reason that we heard for making those adjustments um, to the site plan in general, so 
the experience of all approaching the building would be the same. Uh, you wouldn't want a, a certain subset of the population going in past the dumpsters and a certain going in, you know, the, the main front door that we've designed. Uh, so in an attempt to sort of make them more equal, we just want to look at a few studies that we've done today and, and confirm with Rupert that everything that we're doing here is going to work with the operation of the building. This is just another closer to eye level view of what was included in the schematic documents. So we're looking now at ways to adjust it uh, to one, um, simplify the canopy because simple means less detailing and uh, you know to cut to the chase, less money. Um, it will still provide the shading that is required for the classrooms and shelter at the door. Uh, and then we also want to talk about what we could do in terms of a wall or fencing around the service area and still allow the staff to and uh, deliveries and services that come to school to do what they need to do without obstruction. So this simplifies the canopy in that it's all at one level. Uh, it's uh, maybe a little bit deeper in some areas. We've introduced a slight curve. It's something we want to talk about. There are no curves anywhere else on the building. Maybe that separates the north and south country. Maybe it does. It's just one of many ideas that we've looked at that we just want to put out there for consideration. Uh, here is what it would look like uh, from eye level, looking toward the south entrance of the building. Here you can see a solid wall that has extended almost to the drop-off loop in the service area that the dumpsters will be behind. And this shows the swing open gate swinging out. Uh, whether the gate were to swing, to slide, uh, you know, all things that we need to talk about. And we need to confirm with Rupert that the gate would actually be used, not just be left open full-time and sort of defeating the purpose of it. So, Here's a view of the same configuration that shows a bitter, a bit more of the service area. So here, gate swinging out almost to the corner of the gym, dumpsters straight back from the gate, um, and then the transformer area here outside the door to the service area. Another option uh, simplifies the canopy even more um, as designed, there is an overhang of the landing in the stair already, and that is enough potentially, oh, sorry, I skipped a slide, to protect you from the elements as you enter this south door. Um, so this shows a, a, a simplified canopy, still including the curb, still bringing it back to the building, reducing details. Uh, another difference in this option is it has the semi-transparent fence on the wall against the drop-off area. Um, you know, whether or not you want that to be absolutely solid or a screen is enough to create that separation is something we want to talk about. And here you are at eye level looking to that south entrance of the building. Another configuration. Uh, has a step back. So the canopy itself in the building area is, is really quite modest and the canopy is doing all of the work at the entrance itself. Um, but this still achieves, we think, uh, some of the things that we liked about this feature at SD. We heard that it, um, the bright colorful nature of it is, and adds a little bit of whimsy to the building. It sort of separates the kindergarten classrooms areas, makes them separate. It also identifies entrance. We do a similar thing on the north side. Um, we, we believe with this sort of reduction of the canopy, you still get the daylighting um, obstruction that you need or control that you need at the classrooms. You still get weather coverage at the door. Um, a skylight in a canopy is something that we've used successfully on other projects. Um, single piece polycarbonate skylight um, allows light so you don't get a dark spot. I don't think darkness is going to really be an issue at this entrance. It's facing directly south, but it's uh, something to consider. Um, 
then with each of these, we look at them from the eye level, um, you know, to see if we are appropriately screening the service area and if we can actually make an entrance out of it. Tim, if you if you could um, bring up the site plan, though, because I think um, there's sufficient space in the loop for the drop off area where you know the students really could enter through the front door um it's 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 and and on while well, rupert's here so that's that's helpful rupert um the morning doesn't seem to be the issue right the bus come mm -hmm. in they're they're staggered or you know they're there for two minutes they drop off and they leave so the arrival kathy um and gang we, we believe we should be able to accommodate having every every student uh, enter the front or if they arrive early go to the playground rupert if if that's the policy uh, before they're let in and then everyone can enter through the cafeteria or that door on the north side of the building it really could be this is more about drop about departure and i believe that the school does uh, separate the students based on walkers, buses, and and cars. So, um, you know, this is more not not just not, I don't want to minimize the importance of this um, egress or entry point, but it really would just be for students probably to being dismissed in the afternoon. Yeah, please, Rupert. Thank you. Yeah, that's very helpful um, uh, because I had thought that we were doing uh, students all coming in on the west entrance, not the south entrance. Um, that might be a larger discussion uh, to involve Tammy and, and Allison in. Uh, but my sense is that in terms of uh, morning staffing, uh, funneling, all, funneling all the kids in one uh, entrance will, 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 will be the way we want to go. Um, uh, but for uh, the afternoon. And the other thing is that typically we don't have a long line of buses in the morning. It's a bus pulls up, it unloads, it pulls away. Uh, so I think I think aiming towards the front entrance in the for morning drop off is still the way to go. Yeah. So the changes that we've recently made to the site plan are reflected in this updated model. Um, they're still tweaking to do this show so sort of a large expanse of uh, hardscape in front that would uh, probably be punctuated with planting. But this, um, if there's only a bus or two at a time, it could pull all the way up to here without obstructing the vans, um, which is uh, pretty much a straight shot to the front entrance. And there is more than enough room now for almost the entire, certainly all the student population that would be arriving at one time to arrive in front. Um, you know, just just to give you a sense visually of, of what is happening. So I, I think it, yeah, to, to reiterate, on it, it's a, there's certainly enough room for drop off. It is a matter of one, what you see at pickup in the afternoon and just the general identity of the building for people on the south side of it. Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I had a question on the side entrance and the canopies, um, and this is also for uh, Rupert to think of. Um, when you get that flat extension, well, I have a couple of questions. When you get that flat extension um, across from the kindergartens and over, uh, what does it look like three or four years from now in terms of dirt, and how would you clean it? is my, you know, the, so more of it and more unevenness where you can't just walk out. So the continuous one, I can, so that was my one question on whether you want that continuous thing as in A, um, and then later you had it in C or not. And then my other question on this, this, this diagram is showing the kindergartens with doors to the outside of the classroom with pathways to the door. And that was a decision I think that we were 
still leaving to say whether we want all the kindergarten classrooms to have a door that opens outside. So I'm, I think, am I right in what I saw? Because when you did the upper level, you saw a walkway to that outside door, both from the one classroom and from another. Mm -hmm. So one is a question about doors and walkways, and the other is how do you keep that nice white with a uh, orange trim surface clean? Um, to answer the questions, one, uh, the exterior door is required for egress for classrooms of that size, and we did have a discussion with the okay. building commissioner, um, and he, um, well, didn't outright say no. He was very skeptical of removing that door, so we okay. did have that as a VE, and we did not exercise it because we don't think that's going to happen, so okay. um, unless we hear otherwise, those doors are in. Um, and then, honestly, part of the reason for reducing or simplifying the canopy is uh the top of it will be a membrane roof below windows and you are correct they do get a little bit dingy there are things that we can do about that in terms of either a color or maybe using a ballast can, instead of yeah. instead of a membrane yeah uh, tim they're tim they're about to install the ballast at uh D berry on those similar roof areas. Maybe Neil and I can t bring some photos back to share, but it, then it's nice round river wash, natural rock that doesn't look black and dingy. Okay, so that that was my my question on that. Um, and and I'm just seeing, you know, I like the green and the grass, but these are all areas that have to be maintained and we're not otherwise using them. It's just that's a comment rather than a should that be there or not? You know, I suppose it can't really be a playground. It's not big enough for a playground, although it, the kids could go out and sit outside. I mean, they could actually have a class. It looks big enough that for kindergartens, they could sit outside, um, which is, is nice. Um, that's, I'll stop. Uh, Jonathan was next. So a, a couple, what, one is really a question from Rupert, which is that I, am I correct to assume that the number of van parking locations that they're showing, that's that's really about the, the afternoon pickup. All the vans arrive at once, they all get kind of loaded up simultaneously and then they depart. Um, and that's that's what sets that dimension of that space. Um, is, that, is that a correct assumption? Yeah, I think, I think that's right. I think that the van drop-offs in the morning, like the buses, will be as close to the front door as possible. Yeah. Um, and I do have a question about uh, the van section for later when it's my turn. Okay. And so then I, I think of all the options that you were showing, I think it's C that I like the most with the canopy. I, I don't mind that it kind of steps in, steps out, and kind of works with the, the building a little more. Um, I would tend to favor um, more uh, enclosure on the trash and uh, and transformer service area, um, although not necessarily a wall. I worry, you know, lo the long term maintenance of a wall that doesn't have, you know, space behind it is is often problematic because um, the, the caps wear out and, you know, you don't see water leaking in like you do in a building. So. Um, but uh, I guess I opt for more screening versus less at that at that condition. Rupert. Thank you, yes. Um, in terms of the screening, uh, because this is uh, uh, deliveries, as I understand it, are going in through that door for the kitchen. Um, my guess is that any screening gate that we have would be wide open all day long, just because of all the deliveries that come and go. Uh, so, it, uh, you know, practically speaking, you know, it potentially in the way of clearing snow um, and you know something extra to, to deal with. But um, but I understand visually uh, it it has its value. At some point, we, we might want to consider whether it's lockable so that. Uh, uh, we don't get people using the dumpsters that aren't part of the school. Um, so that's that's part of it. If you could go to the uh, uh, slide that shows the front door, the west entrance. 
This? Yes, that's the one. So um, I, we have, uh, maybe it's just this model so far, but there's an issue if vans are loading or unloading, they're gonna have their uh, red flashers on and their stop signs out. Mm -hmm. And so the buses that are loading or unloading won't be able to pass them. Um, uh, and sometimes it can take a while to do the van loading. So I was hoping that we could look at some kind of um, island or something so that it's not the bus roadway. And then the buses could legally pass vans that were in the process. Okay. Um, this cut through the center of the loop was added specifically so the vans could get by the buses. Uh, but hearing that it needs to work both ways, uh, we will have to look at that. Yeah, I don't know what could be done, but it's an idea. Uh, is Rick saying something? Yeah, that would only have to, that could be a two foot island, right? Yeah. With a curb along the side of, yeah, just to make it, because they're all professional drivers, that's a plus. So that would make it the legal, legally being able to pass a stopped van. Rupert, is it problematic to plow though, if you've got that a little tiny island? Um, so if there's signs on the island, um, there's not going to be any plowing on it. Uh, if the island has, um, sloping curves, it may be that we, the plow will hit it while it's doing the rest of the driveway. Right. Um, or we may end up having to uh, pull the snowblower out there to the island to clear it. You're muted again, Rick. Would an island with slope curves meet the legal requirement for separation between a travel lane and a bus drop off? I have no idea. Um, you know, there may not be any choices here. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Kathy, you have. Yeah, I, I'm on a different topic, so I just want to, if there was anything more. Um, so when Jonathan liked option C, I did also, but I thought a skylight is asking for trouble on um, both. When I asked if you can keep the roof clean, um, uh, dirty skylights are, are dirty. Um, so it, it feels like you've got enough light coming in, and it's yeah. a nice, it's a really nice protection if it's raining or snowy um to come in there um so come in or come out um so i would just uh even though that one picture you showed overhead tim shows that nice ray of light coming downwards it doesn't <laughs> seem to me like it would be too uh dark in there given no. the side of the the building that it's on yeah i, I agree with you kathy I, I i had meant to add that i don't think we need the the skylight so that's an that's options option D is C without skylight. Is that what we are, Tim? Uh, well, there's also a break in the 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 plane at the middle of the uh, where you turn the corner in the building, but uh, it's, it's they're very similar. Okay. Hold on. So if, look, if you look at option C, there's only one um, roof elevation, and then when you go down to Option D, uh, there is a break in the plane. Subtle, uh, granted. So just just on a, when you, is it less expensive to have no break? Or does, is it basically the same because these are facade, facade like attachments? Um, I, every, every, every detail, every corner, every turn you make, in, in a real sense adds cost, but I, I think for the sake of design at you're you're getting into the level of um it's hundreds of dollars. Yes. Yeah, it's a minor yes, it's a, yeah. Yeah. The answer is yes, but not that much. Okay. I'm not enough of a designer to know whether I like C or D better. So I will leave that to <laughs> the world that looks carefully at lines um and breakups in lot of lines. Yeah. Can I can I just 
can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, Margaret. Yes. Okay. So can I just chime in and say another component of this is, and it is really kind of in the details is how those roofs are going to drain. I mean, I actually like the, visually, I like the fact that they are offset a little bit. I think it looks good, but I, my primary concern here would probably, I think needs to be, you know, whichever one you think is going to drain more efficiently, because I do think the difference in cost would be de minimis. But, um, you know, it, it's about, to me, it's about the details of, of how you drain them. Understood. Um, yeah, and, and we will obviously be very, looking very closely at that. And what is not oh. super apparent here is that there is a, um, a slight projection of the kindergarten rooms because they are taller. Um, and so there's actually some roof area there that makes it more than just the return of the canopy that gives you the room to either slope insulation or add the roof drain or or and, and, and a lot of our projects, well, in fact, all of our elementary school projects probably recently have a, a detail similar to this. So we are well aware of it. Thank you. Um, and then I don't even know that I got to E yet, which is an um, it simply stops the canopy short, uh, allows you to enter straight to the door. Um, but this does not have a canopy at the coverage uh, at the door itself. So it was just there for a visual exploration. Yeah. <laughs> I, nope. I, I hear Kathy's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a facial expression. <laughs> That's okay. Bad ideas uh, allow you to know what the good ideas are. So I see Rupert's hand is up, but I was wondering on the swinging gates, is it possible to have a sliding gate? that just slides over and back um, instead of two that open, one that goes over to have it basically open when you want it to be, but then able to shut it. Did, did does that, did that, is that a, a sliding? Way? Sliding gates are certainly possible. Um, the amount of area that you can open up becomes a bit more limited. Um, and then if the real issue with the gate is it will never be closed, I don't know that sliding for swing addresses that, but uh, Rupert has his hand up and maybe he can offer a bit more insight. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to team back uh, with folks. Uh, I mean, I think from a practical standpoint, the custodians uh, would rather have no gate at all because it's just an in, uh, impediment. <laughs> um, 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 uh, for and and the uh, the flowers will probably snow blowers all those guys will probably feel the same. Um, it does increase security a little bit uh, to be able to lock off the the dumpsters uh, with a gate, but we could physically lock the dumpsters. We just have have not had the. Uh, um, consistency and practice to, to do that. Um, I was, uh, I had my hand up though, just to comment that uh, I have no objection to curvy roofs on square buildings. Um, I don't find it visually uh, um, unfortunate in any way. Um, and in some ways, I think it kind of adds interest, but that's that's a, a personal visual perspective, not yeah, a functional one. If, I, I will say that the, the study of, of these entrances and canopies is in no way complete yet, but we're just trying to, you know, hear what your preferences are, what you want to accomplish, um, and, and you will be revisiting this sure and then with the added layer of function uh after we speak to some of the administrators basically how things work how you know making sure that we're covering the right amount of kids coming in and leaving the building that there's enough area for assembly for whatever has to happen Ken and rick what is the underside the, uh, the finish of the underside of the canopy um it would be pre, pre finished aluminum of some sort, yeah. soffit panels. Got it. Okay. Jonathan? 
I, I don't necessarily object to the curves. The if we had a curve here, though, then I would want you to explore a curve at the front entry. I mean, it's just a little bit about the, you know, the, the hierarchy of that front entry having kind of the most visual interest, and this one needs to be, you know, call out entrance. But, but you know, if it's not our primary entrance, somehow it needs to kind of step down a little bit in in the level of elaboration, at least in my mind. Um, and the, I guess the other thing I wanted to note on this view um, is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm interested by Rick's idea of putting, um, you know, the, the gravel up on that roof to, so that we don't have uh, both, the, you know, the, the issue of a dingy looking white uh, EPDM roof eventually. Um, but also, I think there'd be an issue with the uh, screwing up the, um, the daylighting because you would get a lot of light bounce on the south side. You know, off these roofs into these classrooms, and it makes me wonder if that same gravel treatment might need to happen over the service entrance. I can't quite remember what the the roofs to the left of the stair hall are. I can't remember if those rooms are classrooms or if those are administrative rooms. Or uh, there are two offices there at OTPT, so there will certainly be occupants. And um, you know, as you're pointing out. Uh, South facing light on a white roof or a very light roof uh, can bounce an incredible amount of light. So that is yeah. definitely something that we're gonna have to uh, pay attention to. Uh, there are other low roofs that are in front of windows on the north side of the building. Obviously glare will not be an issue there to the same extent, uh, but the dingy roof effect is real. Uh, so we're gonna have to think about all of them. So on the enclosure, um, you know, I, I think we, you know, if, if, if the gate is not going to be used, then we've got an object that we're maintaining but not using. Um, and it, it, you know, as, as much as I would like to screen as much of this as we can, uh, there's really no point in, in building a gate that will not be used. It wouldn't be a cheap gate one way or the other. That's a that's an awfully wide opening. Um, Rupert, do you know? Are you anticipating like a, a food truck kind of backing up here, or um, would they just kind of parallel park in the, where the buses are shown now, and they would just kind of be dollying stuff through here? Um, well, uh, I think uh, right now we have both things happening at the middle school where where food service uh, unloads. Uh, I'm not quite sure at the elementary schools how much that is, but this is going to have a bigger kitchen than the other elementary schools. So right. I'm imagining that both will happen depending on which uh, purveyor it is and, and, and what vehicles they use. The bread trucks might just load out the side, but the uh, produce trucks and the refrigerated trucks might back in. Okay. Um, it's something that I don't know exactly. We, it's worth looking into. Rupert, are the uh, dumpsters front or rear loading? Um, we are switching uh, vendors this year. Uh, right now, the dumpsters are all front loading. I'm not sure who the, how the new vendor will work it, but I assume that it will. The, tr the truck will pull up forwards, empty the dumpster, and then back out. Okay. Maybe there is a way to limit an always open opening that would allow access to both the dumpsters, the a more direct food entry, and give Eversource what they want for getting 10 feet away from the uh, transformer. Yeah, I think that would be a good thing to look at. Yeah, are you thinking of like a partial screen or something? Like a partial screen, and I think that maybe the screened area might want might need to come out to be flush with the south side of the gym to get the room to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah. that that might be a possibility. Yeah, are you thinking a, a wall that? is there at the uh, south side, but maybe returns one bay of the fence? Well, it, it can be a combination of wall and, and perf metal. <laughs> uh, got a couple of examples that we've done a similar thing. Uh, a sliding gate, I think, 
sliding gates and like like to have a wheel at the end and that can complicate snow removal and making sure it can always roll uh swing gates are the most foolproof uh you might be able to locate a swing gate in such a manner that it's always open but you can lock it if you think you have to uh i'm, I'm looking at one opening and basically you go off your back end or drive in at three forks to access what you want and and through something that's perforated and something that's solid you can get the screening there's something to be said about seeing behind the wall too and being not able to yeah. not a hiding place yeah 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 good point good point i like what you're thinking and rick could it swing in rather than out if you move it out flush? it could it could swing in rather than out i mean if you you could swing it imagine if you will uh, an opening on the right hand side and that fence line came out and if it swung in and swung tight against the walls and was able to swing you know 360 against the inside face of another wall uh of the other area that could be a possibility because the trouble with having a gate swing out is you can't swing out into the vehicle that's approaching it if it happens to be closed when you when you swing it right. on the, the other thing I'll, i would throw out there is you know it's nice to screen the the transformer um but the thing to me that we really would the you know the highest priority to me is screening the the dumpsters and so if the screening was really focused on the dumpsters and the path to the service entrance and the and the transformer were exposed to view um, at least visually I, I would be okay with that you know our eyes get used to seeing things like transformers we see them every day um but the you know the dumpsters are nice to screen um and and kind of keep people away from them too and then you're not having to worry about opening and closing a gate for all those dumpsters mm -hmm. i mean all those deliveries mm -hmm. So I don't know. And and frankly, have we thought at all, Tim, about having an overhang over the delivery door? Uh, we have uh, one of the options. Yeah, one shows of those. That... Yep. There yeah, you there go. you go. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I was going to say also, if it swings in, we need to figure out how to clear the snow out to be able to open the gate without opening the gate to get the snow clearing stuff in. <laughs> Very practical issue. Yeah, this 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 area certainly um, requires more thought. Um, like just off the bat, we probably wouldn't make the cover over the uh, service entrance door the same language as the building entrance on right. this side. But um, but yeah, we we're hoping to you know get a, a good sense of your priorities. You know what is important to screen, what is not whether it should be screened. So I think we are hearing some good feedback here. Sean. Um, quick question, and again, not a building person. Is the transformer where the electricity comes into the building from the from the road? Uh, yes, that's where the high voltage electricity from the road is uh, reduced to building voltage. OK, and is the um, I can't remember the layout of the site. Does the electricity come in from the road on this side of the street or will it in the future? It, it With the new building, the service for the electricity will be switched to the south entrance and okay. come in, in the drive to that transformer okay. location. Okay, thank you. At one point, I seem to remember we were talking about transformers out uh, farther away and there was a sort of a cost analysis about whether it made sense to um, uh, pull the lower voltage all the way in from across the parking lot or not. And I'm not sure how that set it. Uh, one of the driving factors for putting the transformer there, as you're saying, was you know the project pays for the wire from the transformer and Eversource pays for the wire to the transformer. So the closer the transformer oh. is to the electric room, which is right here, uh, the less those feeders are charged the and, the and honestly they're expensive so that is why i stand towards i know i should know this do we have a 
emergency generator? We do. Um, let me where, where pull is up that the site. Then. This uh, you can barely see it, um, but there's a dash oh, rectangle yeah. there, and uh, that 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 might that rectangle might be a bit too far left. What versus what's on the electrical drawings? But uh, a similar discussion about the generator placed it about here, um, because those feeders to get from the building to the generator are are, are also present. I mean, in a perfect world, we would put it as close to this um, storage building as possible, but uh, you know, as, a, as a, a nod to cost, we sort of split the difference. But it is, I, I you know, visually out of the way. Um, and then there's also the possibility of building a, a fence around it. Tim, Rick. what, is this a 600? Do we, is this? Currently, what? what was priced was a 600, I mean, yes. Okay. Which, on a on a day tag, yes, this will be a very very large tall generator. So I I don't think a a, a fence a fence will hide a fence will <laughs> a half hide of it the lower half, half. half the lower half to maybe two thirds. Mm -hmm. That that is the realistic view. Yes. And then, um, I mean, there are also um, pads that uh, have, have the services and uh, infrastructure for the PV array. So uh, there's yes, going to be there's going to be stuff here. Yeah, pads for the vehicle charging. There's going to be stuff. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I was going to ask about the stuff that we're not necessarily paying for now is if we ever had a backup backup battery, a backup battery for solar, mm -hmm. would it go next to the, would it go out in that general area? Where, where would it be? It's a better way of asking it. I, I think it would go out in that general area, the same sort of uh, parameters that all, that cause you to um, locate the generator and the transformer are close. Um, the feeders all come with a price and the, sh the closer it is to the switch gear and the connection to the building, the lower those costs are. I mean, technically it could be anywhere, but uh, it wants to be close to the PV and it wants to be close to where it feeds the building. For the sake of reducing cost on that transmission line. Yeah, and that battery is about parking space size. Mm -hmm. So it would most likely be in the in the neighborhood of the generator, the car charging yeah. infrastructure. Yeah, because we've run out of parking space size things near the transformer. You have it at the um, Lexington School. It's behind, just in a, that was the battery I saw um, that wasn't, I think, linked up yet, that Tesla battery. That was what we're talking about, right? In terms of a visual, what I can see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it, you know, they come in, it, they're all different sizes, um, Kathy's. So <clears throat> they went back and forth and, um, ultimately, it, it's really hard to plan, right? We needed to plan. We needed to know the size of the pad. Um, and you need to do that. We need to know what pads we're placing now for this project, right? Because we have to go before Conservation Commission, as we did in Lexington. And um, so they estimated the size of the pad. And so now they're kind of backfilling the amount of battery that will fit on that pad. Yeah. Any other hands? Um, 
in terms of materials that we have to present um, until we have the meetings with the administrators and school staff, that is what we have on this particular topic. Uh, the upcoming uh, building design subcommittee meetings will most likely get more packed with more materials as each one goes, but uh, that is what we have to present today. Uh, and thank you for your thoughts, and I, I think you were uh, pretty clear on uh, some of your priorities and how we want to adjust the design and, and rethink the service area on the south side of the building. Uh, Tim and Donna, if I know Wednesdays were good days for you for these meetings, and you at one point it said Tuesday afternoon. So if in the interest of efficiency, as you are talking with Tammy and Allison about staff you need on this, if the building subcommittee needs to meet at a different time, you know, we can, you, we should just have a conversation about it, you know, I, if we want to bring everybody together at one point. So right now, this has been the time slot. So I'm just saying it as a, uh, as a uh, agenda setting, we had we haven't, I don't think we have, but I'll double check because when I was away on vacation, everything got posted, but you know, we haven't necessarily posted them, but I can change the postings if we need to. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think, Kathy, our, our conversations, um, well, it's twofold, right? So having conversations with Tammy and Allison as it relates to some of the function spaces inside the building, those, those are going to occur outside of this building committee, subcommittee. Um, but then we also do want their input um, on discussion decisions that are made or recommended, I should say, in this group, as well as the site subcommittee. And their time is a, a challenge yep. right now, so that we may need to shift. Yeah, or I'm, if I'm you're comfortable, it, it, we, I'm, yeah, or we could have it with them while we're meeting with them about the other stuff and bring bring back to the to this group what their comments are. If yeah, that my, works my main point was do what makes sense to get the input you need and then we can bring it together. So just on a, you know, so that we're not asking this subcommittee to make decisions or even think about some of the options that need input from the users of the building. I mean, yeah. we have Rupert here, but we may, you know, when you start talking about some some of these, it may be other staff. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments today? We do have public, so I will see if we have any so, comments before. But Kathy, I don't. Can I? Yeah. Can I just make ask one question for clarification? So, so we talked about um, having the building subcommittee the next one at this at noon on the 31st. Now I've put a hold in my calendar for that. I totally agree with what you said about the need for Denisco to meet first with the staff. Is it helpful if we if we think we're gonna potentially keep that meeting until it's confirmed, is it helpful if I send an invite to the folks on the subcommittee so they know that it's out there? Because right now there's no marker in anyone's calendar for that. I think so, Margaret, there's both a site committee at nine in the morning on the list and a building committee at 12, sub, the subcommittees. So, um, so there, there is, but no, no invite has been sent out. So, for so no, meeting. right, because it, the invites don't even get sent out till Angela set, posts them. So, but what you're asking is exactly. putting a hold on people. You want me to send a hold so that people a, know that that's it. I would put a hold on people's calendars and then I'll have an agenda setting just to make sure we need both of those meetings. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. Then I'll, Perfect. and then I'll have Angela post them and do, you know, the, the full, cause we'll, if we post them, yeah, it's Wednesday. So if we post them by Friday afternoon, you know, officially post exactly. them. You know, I got alerted by okay. one astute public person that there was still a site design cause I'd for this morning, because I'd forgotten to undo it. So I just want to yeah, make sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, that's great. So that's the logistics. So does any, um, we're open for public comments right now. Um, if anyone has any, please raise your hand. 
I am not seeing, oh, there's a hand. Hi, it's Tony Cunningham. Um, I just wanted to ask about the canopy that's over the kindergarten classrooms. Is that a requirement or is that there for aesthetic reasons because, um, or is it because there's doors? Because uh, I, I wonder if, I, you, I think you said for daylight, but I would wonder then why you wouldn't also need it on the second and third floor if it was for those reasons. Um, I like the larger canopy over the doorway and I agree with the comments about no skylight and having it be not white and something that won't let look grubby as dirt and debris falls on it and uh, something that's easy to get the snow off if it's not melting. Um, so yeah, that's all I had. Thank you. You know, so I think we'll put what we're collecting these comments um, and, you know, at least one thing Tim had said, it's about, it's also in replacing the sunshades that are among the top floor things so we can come back and revisit those. Thank you, Tony. Okay, so I think that's it. So right now we're scheduled to meet again at as a building subcommittee at 12 on Wednesday. And what's listed on that is corridors and project areas. So that that's just, you know, the, to be determined, is that the right list or not? And as soon as this is a little bit more firmed up, I am going to send something out to the full committee. So if you need the first week in June, Danisco, you know, as, as you start to sort through just, you know, start to think about what's the first or first and or second week of June so that you can uh, do this review. Um, so I, I want to thank everybody. And I think we, unless I see a hand go up, I think we can say we are adjourned at uh, just before- 1257. One, <laughs> thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.